Now, last video, we saw a simple formula to look through a list of cities and always extract from a description the correct city name. Now, the thing about Excel worksheets is they're just a simple solution. But guess what? We want to see how to do it in Power Query. And one of the reasons why is he said, hey, this is a data cleaning trick. Now, he asked for an Excel worksheet formula, but this is something that we definitely want to be able to do in Power Query also. But here's the problem. It's much harder. Now, what I want to do is show you how we do it in the worksheet. It'll help us visualize exactly what's going on. In the worksheet, we use Reduce. When we get over to Power Query, we'll use List.Accumulate. Now, Reduce is a function that iterates over an array and only gives you the last answer. That's different than its sister function, Scan, which iterates over an array and delivers all the values. Now, what in essence we're going to have to do is these are the cities we're checking for. So I need to iterate through each one until I find the correct one. So for the first description, I'd find Sacramento. And just like last video, the iterating function that will work in each row is search. So if it's looking for Boston, it can't find it. So it will deliver an error, 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 error. Here, it'll search for Sacramento and report the 22nd position as where it found the subtext string. Now, reduce is what's going to iterate. We need an initial value. Because we're dealing with text, we use double quote, double quote, a zero length text string, which represents nothing. The array we're going to iterate, well, there it is. We have to define a function. That's the function that works in each row. We do that in the worksheet with lambda. Lambda has to communicate with reduce. So we have to define two variables that represents these two inputs, i for initial value, a for array. And there's the formula we're going to iterate. Remember, we're checking with search. And since Sacramento is 22, these are all errors. We say is number. Then search does its thing. If it is a number, then it delivers a. Remember, a is the array. Error, error, error. Well, we get true, so it delivers that particular value. Otherwise, i, that's the initial value, that's for the first three rows. Now, if we had duplicates, we'd do it this way. Initial double quote with a space, the particular value. That way, if we have duplicates, there'll be a space in between. Now, in Power Query, we're going to use list.accumulate. That is like reduce. But guess what? The arguments are flipped. So we do array and then double quote, double quote. In Power Query, we don't have Lambda, but we can define custom functions. So there it is. Now in this one, I did blank and cities as the variable names. I'll show you in a second, and I'll do the same two things, i for initial, a for array. Now that defines the two variables in this custom function. Then you have go to equal greater than symbol. That means everything after is the function that it will work in each row. If, and we don't have to use two functions, we use text contains. It's going to check description against each particular item. And when it finds a text item, it will deliver true. So if true, then this is the one in case there's duplicate. Else, then we put a blank. So let's go over to Power Query. I'm going to open up Description, double click. Now we have the query description. Here's the single column. We need to add a column, but we're also going to have to use this query. It is a list, a list of the city names. Description, Add Column, Custom Column. We'll call it City. And instead of reduce, we use list.accumulate. And notice I didn't type a dot. And that's the key to getting IntelliSense to work. So I can hit Tab and get the correct function, open parentheses. Now, reduce has two arguments, initial and array. And then in Lambda, we put the variable for initial and array. But here, this function reverses them. We put the array first and then the seed or initial value. Now I need city in this argument as the list. Cities, I see the variable tab, comma, the seed or initial value, double quote, double quote. Now comma, 
There it is, accumulator as function. We don't use lambda. Open parentheses. And here's the crazy thing. We put it in array initial, but we have to reverse it in the function, initial array. So those are our two variables. There's our go-to operator, our formula, lowercase if. And we use text.contains. There it is, tab, open parentheses. The text we're going to check in each row of this table, description, double click, comma. And the text substring, that's each row represented by A, that's the array, close parentheses. So if this comes out true, then what do we want? In the Sacramento row, we want Sacramento. So that's the array we're iterating, A, else. For all the earlier rows that don't have a match, that's the I. And that's our formula. When I click OK, there it is. Now up here, we have table.addColumns. That's the new name. For each row, that's our formula. Now we're going to do a city with dupes. And that means we need to change this right here. Initial, and remember, that's just double quote, so it really shows as nothing. We're going to join it to, and we want a space between each one of the city names. So we join those. Click OK. And now if we look down here, this one did have Seattle and Oakland. So the first one only gave us Seattle. This one, Oakland and Seattle. Now notice there's an extra space because of that double quote space, double quote. So right up in the formula bar, we'll trim it. Text.trim, down arrow, open parentheses. And then all of that, we really want one here, but you could put it at the end too. Now when I hit Enter, now we get it. And that formula will deal with dupes. So there you go. That's a little fun with list.accumulate to extract a city name from a description based on a list of cities in Power Query. There's our reduce formula. And of course, like last video, there's our beautiful, simple Barry Houdini formula to do the same thing, but only in the worksheet. All right, we'll see you next Excel magic trick.